Team coverage right now of the president's trip to Asia as well as the latest in Ukraine. So joining us now is ABC News political reporter Brittany Shepard from Washington, D.C. and ABC News foreign correspondent Tom Sufi Burge. He's in Kiev. So, Brittany, let me begin with you on Biden's comments on Taiwan. Yeah, obviously, the White, White House is trying to clean it up because they say we aren't really changing U.S. policy. But I'm wondering, given what's happening in Ukraine and the president's response to that and what it might say about authoritarian regimes' eagerness to test the United States' resolve, might it be intentional on Biden's part? And if not, what's the point? Well, you're exactly right, Terry. I mean, the Biden White House rarely does something like this without intention, even if that they weren't planning on getting their messaging out right now. We're seeing a new backdrop for a feud as old as time. China and the U.S. infamously unfriendly bedfellows, as you know. Right. And we're seeing Biden trying to reassert the United States and actually his own force in the Indo-Pacific region. And as an international leader, you're seeing Biden get hits on Afghanistan, getting hit by Republicans and even Democrats here at home on how he's handled Ukraine and the loss of life and hunger that we've been seeing month after month after month. And I think that there's some critical thinking here done by Biden, say, if I come out strong against China, if I show that we're willing to not only get up to the line, but put boots on the ground, or as the White House staffer has been saying for the past couple of hours, just providing military help by weapons, that the United States is unafraid to look China in the eye and say, we are here. It's no longer the America first policy that President Trump pushed, that America first was America alone. Now America first means America together, at least if you're Joe Biden. Hmm. Uh, no question that Putin's invasion has changed geopolitics around the world. Uh, and, and Brittany, President Biden set to meet with two other members of the so-called Quad, India, Australia. That's India, Australia, Japan, and the United States, the Quad against China. Uh, so what can we expect from these talks? So. We heard a little bit about this trade and economic plan uh, in Brit's package, and we're going to hear President Biden pushing his allies in the Quad to be hard against Vladimir Putin and come out in support of Ukraine, especially pr pressing India's PM Modi on his relationship with Putin and all of the ancillary damage that this war in Ukraine has caused. It's not just human life and military life, but it's also a strain on human human hunger. There is a humanitarian world hunger crisis that the White House says that they will definitely be pushing this food shortage. You know, Ukraine is the breadbasket of the world. and. India is the second largest grain exporter, and India has banned all domestic exports on grain. That means all the bread they're making is not leaving India. And President Biden will be pushing Modi to see the bigger picture here. In these developing countries, and even here in the United States, you go to the grocery store, um, prices are high. And so imagine you're in a more developing nation. You are going to be hungry. Your children are going to be hungry. And President Biden is going to attempt to solve a humanitarian crisis that we've never seen before. That's just a little bit of preview of what we might be seeing later on today and tomorrow. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Brittany. Let's, let's move now back to the war in Ukraine. So, Tom, uh, the president, you know, not making news uh, during during this necessarily on Ukraine, uh, but uh, with chief of staff, uh, chief of the joint chiefs of general, chief of the joint uh, chiefs of staff, General Milley and Secretary of Defense Austin, they did confirm some new details on this morning's Ukraine contact group meeting, including new military aid announcements from other countries. What, what came out of all that? Yeah, Terry, defense officials from 40 different countries, including the United States, uh, on that video link call today. Um, Secretary of Defense uh, Lloyd Austin not giving details about what new U.S. weapons are coming here to Ukraine, but singling out uh, some of its allies, saying Denmark and, Czech, and the Czech Republic, for example, are stepping up their support. Uh, they're going to provide anti-ship weapons for Ukraine to defend its coastline, uh, attack helicopters. Other countries like Greece, Poland, uh, Italy are going to step up their support in the form of artillery ammunition and artillery systems. Ongoing discussions between the Americans and the Ukrainians right now to see what new uh, quantities and types of weapons, namely the rocket launcher systems which can hit targets at distance, when those might be provided now that that $40 billion aid package has been signed. Well, Tom, let's, let's talk about the, the cost in Ukrainian lives. You know, the, the, this has just been such a, a terrible war. President Zelensky 
revealing today that more than 70 people were killed in a single missile strike on a military base not far from Kyiv, an, an attack that happened a week ago. But then over the weekend, Zelensky said 50 to 100 Ukrainian soldiers are being killed every day in the fighting in the eastern Donbass. Uh, what do you make of these numbers, and why is President Zelensky uh, talking about this at this point, do you think? Yeah, Terry, I think uh, over the course of this war, we've probably spoken more about Russian casualties in this war. You can see the burnt out Russian tank on display in the heart of Kiev uh, behind me. You know, the Russians not giving precise figures by any means, but lots of estimates for the huge numbers they've lost. The Ukrainians have also been very, very quiet, uh, even silent about the casualties they've sustained. But Zelensky putting that number out over the weekend of between 50 and 100 troops every single day. And I think that speaks of the pressure that Ukraine is under in the Donbass right now in the east of the country. You know, the, the amount of information coming out from the front lines is limited because it's so, so dangerous for journalists to get into those areas. But we know that the, the fighting is incredibly intense. And for me, the fact that Zelensky has gone public with that kind of figure speaks of how much the Ukrainians are now kind of pleading with their allies to even step up even more the support that they're getting in terms of weaponry and the like. And, you know, the Ukrainians are being quite clear about that. They want more weapons, many more weapons. It's been really significant up to now. Thousands of anti tank weapons, thousands of uh, anti-aircraft missiles, hundreds of armoured personnel carriers. The list is endless, but they want much, much more. Because in this new phase of the war, right, the, the war of attrition, this grinding war, Russia's advantage in just sheer manpower and numbers comes forward. And, and, and Zelensky looking for big-time weapons to even that out. So I want to turn to Inside Russia. Starbucks announcing today that it's filing other big international names, pulling out of Russia altogether. Is that a big deal? I think it is. I think every single big name, Starbucks is a big name uh, that pulls out of Russia. It affects Russians' lives. It might affect a proportion of the population, namely urbanites, people in the cities, people with at least a degree of money. It might not hit poor rural communities. But the Ukrainians say this does matter. And Zelensky was pitching to the, the global business elite uh, in the Swiss resort of Davos today, that annual gathering. And his pitch was really about this, that he wants more Western businesses to shut the door on Russia, to increase the economic pain. And he wants Western leaders to to close, close the loopholes on sanctions. No sanctions are perfect, I think it's fair to say. He wants them to be tightened up. He wants the pressure on the Putin regime to be cranked up so that it has some kind of impact, not only on funding the war, but politically as well in Moscow too. Because right now, not only is Russia surviving, the rubles hit a four-year high recently. And so it looks like there may be more room for sanctions, at least according to Zelensky there. Tom, Brittany, thanks very much for that on the president's trip and on the war in Ukraine. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.